This is the second video in our series, and in this video we're going to look at the microstructure and the properties of compacted graphite iron. And we'll do that in comparison to the conventional cast iron, gray cast iron. Um, cast iron is a combination of iron and graphite particles, and the natural shape of the graphite particles is as flakes. And the flakes bring a lot of good things to the casting. Um, graphite is five times better at transferring heat than iron, so we rely on the graphite flakes to transfer the heat from the combustion into the cooling water. Um, the graphite flakes also help with vibration damping. So if I hit the side of this casting, the vibrations try to pass through, but they bounce around on the graphite particles until they finally just dissipate. So very good vibration damping. And the other benefit of the graphite is that as carbon particles come together during solidification, there's a 9% volume expansion. And we rely on this expansion to offset the contraction of the iron and to squeeze out any porosity or shrinkage defects that might occur. So a lot of good things. But unfortunately, each of the graphite particles is an opportunity for a crack to initiate and a crack to propagate. So if we look in this uh, picture, a crack could travel along the surface of this graphite particle, and when it comes to the end, it only has to go through a little bit of iron before it finds neighboring graphite particles and continues to spread. And that's the nature of a brittle material. Um, like the windscreen in your car, once a crack starts, you can't stop it. So in compacted graphite iron, we want to keep all of these advantages of the graphite, so we still want elongated and randomly oriented graphite, but we want to make each of the graphite particles shorter and thicker, and most importantly, to have a rounded edge. So I'd like to look at the graphite particles in more detail, and what we can do is to dip the iron into acid. It dissolves the iron, but the graphite stays. And then we can look in a scanning electron microscope and see the true three-dimensional shape of the graphite. So here for gray iron, now we can see these graphite flakes. Um, we have very sharp edges, and this is the stress concentration that can allow a crack to begin. In the textbooks, they refer to them as knife edges. And then we have a very smooth surface, and you can feel in your stomach how a crack can easily travel along the surface of that graphite particle. Again, in the textbooks, the failure mode in gray iron is called delamination. So we always fail at the interface between the graphite particle and the iron. Um, in compacted graphite iron, you see that the shape of the graphite is quite different. It isn't individual short and thick graphite particles like we saw in the previous overhead, but it's more like the coral that you see on the bottom of the ocean. And this coral is tangled and twisted into the iron. So on the macro scale, We've taken away the linear path for the crack to travel. And on the micro scale, the bumpy surface anchors the graphite into the iron. And intuitively, you can feel how it's more difficult for a crack to travel along that surface. We can go to one higher magnification. We see the very sharp edge of the graphite particle and the, and the smooth surface in gray iron. And when we look at the same magnification for CGI, this, we see this nice worm with his rounded edge, his bumpy surface, and connected to his neighbors. And it's that connectedness that gives us the good vibration damping and the good heat transfer. So if we look at a simple overview of the mechanical properties and um, tensile strength, CGI is at least 75% higher. Um, elastic modulus or stiffness is about 50% higher. And the fatigue strength, doesn't matter how you measure, whether it's in uh, tension compression, rotating bending, three-point bending, torsion, it's always the double because it's more difficult to initiate a crack and more difficult for that crack to propagate. We always have double of the fatigue strength. And ultimately, that's what design engineers design to. So providing these mechanical properties, we allow the designers to reduce wall thickness, reduce the size and the weight of the engine, and even to push it harder to get more efficiency and better fuel economy. And we've got a lot more information on this, so if you want more information, contact us.